Hello, in this video we will talk about monoids. We will start with some definitions, what a monoid is and why we might want to use it. Then we will talk about uh, some, some examples. Uh, I'll show some examples of monoids that you may have encountered in your Scala code. Uh, I'll, I'll introduce some monoids that are useful on a day-to-day -day basis. And uh, then we will look at uh, how we can use them beyond the, the basic usage. And then I'll sum up what we've learned and uh, tell you what the next steps are. So to understand monoids, I think it's best if we first understand what uh, semi-groups are. So uh, we'll start with a semi-group. So a semi-group is a type class uh, that for any for a type a it defines a binary operation which is just just an operation uh, with two arguments of the same type this type a that we have in the semigroup uh, definition uh, which results in another instance of, of that type and this is pretty pretty simple uh, you could come up with probably hundreds or or even more of possible implementations of this for some type A, but uh, is it all? Well, it turns out it's not all. So type classes actually need to have some laws in order to, to make any sense. And in the case of, of semi-group, there's just one law. It's called the associativity law. And what it says is that given three elements of this type A, we can combine first the two, uh, the first two, and then the third one, or we can combine the second and the third one first, and then combine that with the, the first element. And these two operations should be equivalent. So combining these two first should be the same as combining these, these two first, and then the other element. So, Basically, what it, this means is that we can put uh, brackets anywhere we want and it all should, should work in the same way as, as, well, in the other arrangements. And this extends to more than just three elements because this also extends to, uh, to sequences of elements. For example, if we have a list uh, and we let, let's imagine we want to combine all the elements in that list, but we want to do that uh, in a sort of parallel fashion. So we could actually split this list up in chunks. Uh, for example, like three elements each, uh, like these are the first three and the second three, and then some more. So combining on this whole list will be the same as combining first the, the first chunk, then the second chunk, then the rest of the chunks, and combining the results in the correct order. And this will be exactly the same, which is quite cool. So knowing this, knowing what semi-group is, and knowing the, the law of uh, associativity of semi-groups, we can extend our knowledge and finally learn what a monoid is. So a monoid is just a, a semi-group plus a neutral element that sort of cancels or absorbs the operation. And what I mean by this is that uh, we, we just get another uh, member of this monoid type, uh, another member of this type class, that's just an empty element of type A. And that behavior, this absorption of, of the operation, the, the combined operation, is guaranteed by more laws. In the case of monoid, we now have a left identity law, which means that if we combine an empty element with something, we get that something back. It's not modified. We also have another law that's basically the same, just in the um, inverse order. If we combine something with the empty element, we get that something back. And that's basically it. That's all we need to know about semigroup. So just associativity and uh, identity in the case of monoid, that's all we need to know in order to work with monoids. 
So let's look at some examples of monoids in our code. Uh, so because there's a plus in this in this symbol of the combine operation, you may think, okay, this sounds like uh, adding integers. So if we see uh, one plus two plus three, this is actually an operation that's associative. We can put parentheses around any part of this expression uh, of adding multiple integers and the result is unchanged. So this sounds like a semigroup. Okay, but what would be the empty element? Can we make this a monoid? And it turns out we can. We can. We just need to use the zero uh, as the empty element. And it turns out that if, if we go and import uh, the default cats instances for, for standard library types, the, the monoid or the semigroup uh, of integers will be uh, exactly that. It will uh, use addition of integers and zero as the empty element. So if we if we run this, we should see four, and uh, that's amazing because this is this basically means that monoid empty is zero, which I can also prove by running it. And yes, it is. So uh, that's the int monoid. Uh, there are others, and there's the string monoid, which basically combines two strings, and that results in just concatenation of those strings, with the empty element being the empty string. So uh, basically this. So, so monoid string of empty will be uh, the empty string. So that's another quite common monoid that you might see. But are there any more useful monoids? Let's see, we can we also have the list monoid. So for a list, no matter what's inside it, we have a monoid. And I can prove this to you. I can come up with a new type. Uh, it doesn't have any instances, any monoid whatsoever. Uh, we can have a list of x's and another one and we can combine them and that compiles. Of course there's nothing in it but uh, I can come up with some uh, some fake lists and if we print this we will see just a concatenation of those lists. Of course I forgot to uh, have a case object to get it to string but uh, yeah, this is it. So this is the, pretty much the only meaningful thing we could do to keep all the elements in the lists. Uh, and that's how the monoid of, of list is implemented. But it turns out that these, these monoids that I just showed you, the addition monoid of ints, the concatenation monoid of strings, and the concatenation monoid of lists, these are just some defaults that uh, they, they are just what the, the authors of CATS decided to use as the defaults. But these are not the only possible monoids for these types. One example of another lawful monoid for int would be the product monoid. So uh, we can actually try to implement this. So in the in the in the product monoid or the multiplication monoid, uh, the the combine operation will ju just be a multiplication of these two uh, values, and the empty element. Well, in order to for this to be true, uh, this this uh, identity, x times empty must be x, and there's just one uh, just one value uh, in the type int that will actually match this, and it's one. Because if we multiply anything by, if we multiply anything by by one, we will get the same uh, the same thing. So we can also use this. And now, if we uh, if we combine multiple uh, values, of course, I need the syntax. If we combine multiple uh, values of type int with this implicit in scope, we will get multiplication. And this is a lawful monoid. It still, 
obeys all these laws that we introduce. It obeys associativity, it obeys left and right identity. And this is all we need. So keep this in mind while working with monoids and semigroups and pretty much all the type classes that the type that you are working with might have more than one correct instance of that type class. And in the case of monoid, there's actually a lot. So what can we do with monoids other than just adding values? Well, I've already shown you uh, here in these examples the combine all method. And yeah, let's, let's try it. So I can have a list of something that has a monoid. Let's use ints here. Or I can, I can abstract that out and use the version generic method. Uh, so that'll be uh, implemented for any monoid. And we'll take a list of, uh, of this type T and we will return, well, for now, let's just uh, use type inference. So we can use the, the combine all function if we import the cat syntax. And uh, yeah, so what this is going to do is it's going to fold this list with starting with monoid T empty and then use the combine operator. So this is quite nice. It, it uh, allows us to skip a lot of uh, boilerplate if we do this a lot. And it's quite cool, but what else can we do? It turns out that we can do much more. Uh, and this is sort of, sort of going into the territory of the foldable type class, but I'll just show you something to uh, increase your appetite for this. If we have a list of things like strings, basically this, we can do something like this. For example, map each string to its length and then sum all these uh, values. And this is quite cool already. Like, this is just Scala. This is just what Scala gives us. And it also works based on a type class called numeric, which provides this, uh, this method for adding things. But what if we wanted to use uh, monoid for this? Turns out we could just use combine all because the the monoid for for ints which we have here is the addition monoid in in cats like the basic instance that that's provided by cats so let's see what this gives us this gives us uh 22 and it's pretty cool but it turns out that we can do these two things in one operation it's called fold map so if we fold map, this means is that this function will be applied to each of these elements and combined using some sort of internal accumulator. And then we'll just get the result of combining all these values using this function and the monoid of the result of this function. And that's quite powerful and it can be used for a variety of things. So now I'm going to show you a more advanced monoid, the map monoid. Let's come up with a list of maps. First, we will have uh, a map with the key A that will contain a list of one, two, three. Another map with B that contains a list of four, five, six and another map that contains uh, the key A and a list of two, three, four, and also the key B and list uh, nine, 10, 11, as well as the key C with elements, uh, well, just four, five, six. It doesn't really matter what is in this map, these maps, uh, I'm just going to, to show you what happens. So we can combine all of that into a single map. This will be a map of string and list of int. So basically the same type that each of these maps has. And if we combine all of that, what's going to happen is 
the values at the keys are going to be combined together. So all the values under A will end up in a single list. All the values under B are also going to end up in a single list. So how does this happen? And if we look at the monoid of map, well, if you, if you skip the noise, uh, basically what we need to implement this is the semi-group of the value type. And that is used to combine all the values in the, uh, under the, that key that we are looking for. So whenever we find a value under this key, it will be appended using the semigroup instance. In this case, it's a semigroup of list. So if we run this, actually, if I, if I print each, each value in this map, yeah, you'll see that all the lists under A were combined. So we got this list and this list together uh, in the correct order. Then we got the list of, of Bs, which is, uh, sorry, uh, that's this and that here. And then we got the list of Cs. Well, there was just one C in the whole thing. So that's what we got. But the map monoid is actually quite, quite powerful. Uh, we can also use it to count things. For example, if we have a list of uh, strings, we can uh, fold map that to a map of this, uh, the string's length to uh, the string in a non-empty list. We, we can use an empty list because uh, we, 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 we have an element, right? And we only need the semi-group of this type. So non-empty list has such a, a semi-group and this will work. So let's call this the result and print it. So what we are going to see is a map of uh, all the values basically grouped by, uh, by the length which I think is pretty cool. So this might not be exactly as, as uh, efficient as group by, but it, it gives us sort of this, this extra power that we can use. We could use something else. We could group elements by the amount of occurrences. For example, uh, mapping each element to a key of that element and a value of one. And in this case, we just need some duplicates to prove that it works. Yeah, so we have one A, uh, three foos, one hello, and one bar, which is exactly what we had here. So we learned what semigroups are. We learned about the combined operation and the laws governing that operation. We learned what a monoid is, what the empty element means, and what laws the monoid adds to semigroup. Then we learned about the behavior of some default monoids in cats. And we learned a very important lesson that a single type might have more than one valid monoid. And if you're interested about the possibilities of these monoids, I invite you to take a look at the uh, monoids and semigroups libraries, uh, as they provide some, some monoids like the product monoid or the sum monoid that are explicit. So they will explicitly show uh, what operation you want to perform on uh, some values so that that makes it more explicit than just using the, the semigroup because uh, it's not as ambiguous and it also provides other monoids like for booleans we can have the and monoid and the or monoid and uh, much more so i encourage you to take a look at those libraries and uh, yeah this is all for today i hope you learned uh, quite a lot and I cannot wait to make a new video. So please uh, leave a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel and I hope to see you soon.